We have a very good higher education system in this country. The rankings, the research, the people it produces are proof of that. There's a warning today, the National Tertiary Education Union says some degrees could take up to 44 years to pay off. The Albanese government granted more than half a million student visas in the last financial year. Improving access to higher education is one of those holy writ issues for the Australian Labor Party. Australia's great comparative advantage is its education system. Congratulations to all of you too. It is true also for the Albanese government and particularly Education Minister Jason Clare. I will never forget where I come from. I'm the first in my family to finish high school. I'm the first in my family to finish year 10. Clare finds himself confronting immense pressures on the higher education system in the post-pandemic world. International students have flooded back into the country, but they are returning to a university system that is not only facing precarious funding for research, but widespread criticisms of the quality and quantity of teaching and students that it is producing, both domestically and for the international education market. To deal with this, the Minister has put in place an interconnected series of reviews of the entire education system, from early childhood education, through schools, to universities and vocational training. Today, he launched the interim report of the review of the higher education sector from a panel headed by Professor Mary O'Kane. The Australian university system is rather good and spectacular in international terms. But we also know that we've got some big national needs that require our universities to change a bit. We need lots more graduates and also we need a strong equity focus. Before people even consider going into higher education, they must have finished their schooling. One of the shocking figures, Claire quotes, is that the number of students finishing school has actually been falling since 2017, and the trend is most notable in poor and Indigenous families and among kids from the bush. We live in a world today where almost every single job that's being created will require you to finish school and then go on to TAFE or to university. But once they get to university, problems remain, according to the report released today. It says that despite this demand for higher skills, the demand for undergraduate degrees is actually falling. It is now the lowest since 2014. To fill the forecast gap, Australia needs around 300,000 more students in 2035 and 900,000 by 2050. For the boy from Sydney's western suburbs, the answer is clear. More people from our outer suburbs and our regions going to university. At the moment, almost one in two young people have a uni degree, but not everywhere. Uh, certainly not in the outer suburbs of our big cities and not in our regions. Claire announced a range of immediate measures today to try to fix this, including doubling the number of university hubs in regional and outer urban areas. But the interim report's more significant content may have been in what the minister called... A few big, spiky ideas. And they took me at my word, and hence the echidna on the front page. <laughs> These include what sound like significant changes to the student subsidies paid by government. The report flags a universal learning entitlement and needs-based funding for underrepresented groups. What can we do at the university gate? What can we do with funding to create extra supports for students from disadvantaged backgrounds to get into uni and to stay at uni and complete their degree? It also recognises the costs for many students of doing on-the-job training. A lot of nursing students have told me that you know, basically they experience placement poverty, that they have to give up their part-time job in order to do the work that they need to do at the hospital to gain their qualifications. Claire wants to have a debate about all these student funding issues. And there are also certainly plenty of other spiky ideas about the way universities manage their affairs and about how they fund themselves, which are likely to raise hackles. For example, the review floats a possible levy on international students to help fund research. But international students, according to the report, should not just be regarded as an industry and source of funding and their experience as students needs to be improved. We need to think of international students very much part of our foreign policy arrangements. It's a tremendous asset for Australia to do it. What this report says is that we need to think about ways to put the funding of research on a more stable and predictable basis. We're about 
2.5% of GDP. Uh, OECD average is more than 2.4. In fact, I think it's 2.6. Um, we don't want to be average in anything. We certainly can't afford to be average. It is very challenging because our universities are so good and they carry such an amount of weight in the research area where, against international norms, maybe our industry is not doing as much R&D percentage-wise, but our universities are, are picking up the slack. The report says universities need to rethink how they treat their students to improve retention rates and outcomes, a point the Shadow Education Minister was quick to take up. The government is focusing far too much on driving university places rather than focusing on student outcomes, putting students first. The government has not shown a sufficient appetite to hold universities to account for poor completion rates. Whatever the issues with research and with students, the report says changes also need to be made to the governance of universities, which have had a poor record in recent years as employers and for student and staff safety. Those issues will be on the agenda at a meeting of state and federal education ministers in the next few months.